In the third stanza, the poet questions the value of the donated pictures which have been put up on the walls to raise hopes and aspirations among their children. But ironically, they have a negative impact on their children because they tempted them to lead a better life. The pictures fail to bring light into their pitiable life and just give rise to emotions like hopelessness, despair and desperation. Every donation just put emphasis on nothing but their abject poverty and instead of increasing their self-esteem, they only help them to feel more deprived. The poet also focused on the hardship faced by the children in this stanza. Now, before going to the explanation, I would like to read the third stanza. Surely, Shakespeare is wicked and the map a bad example, with ships and sun and love tempting them to steal, for lives that slyly turn in their cramped holes. From fog to endless night on their slag hip, the children wear skins peeped through by bones and spectacles of steel. With mended glass like bottles bits on stones, all of their time and space are foggy slum, so blot their maps with slum as big as tombs. So surely Shakespeare is wicked and the map is a bad example with ships and sun and love tempting them to steal. So let us focus what these lines mean. As I told you earlier, Shakespeare, who is the epitome of culture and knowledge, was unknown to the children. Though there was a picture of Shakespeare on the walls of the classroom, the slum children did not know anything about Shakespeare because they were totally ignorant about the world of learning and creativity represented by Shakespeare. His studies has no bearings on the lives of the slum children because their reality is far removed from the literary world of Shakespeare. That is why Shakespeare appears to be wicked. Shakespeare is wicked for these children because the slum children are unaware of this literary genius. As in the slum classroom, hardly any quality education takes place. His literature is far-fetched for these children. So, there is no use of putting up his picture in the slum classroom. The portrait tempts the children to liberate themselves from their mundane, boring, miserable existence in the slum and it infuses in them a desire to read more and attain better education in the slum children. Although the portrait of Shakespeare presents to them an intellectual standard that appears to be desirable to the children, but at the same time it fails to empower them to achieve that standard because of their poverty, because of their misery, because of their circumstances. Another interpretation of why Shakespeare is considered as wicked by the poet because Shakespeare's work always deal with grand tales often set in distant land featuring different types of people. His works mostly revolved around royalty and the rich nobles. According to the poet, he only described the world of kings and noblemen, knights which did children can aspire for but can never reach. He is exposing these underprivileged children to a world which is beyond their reach, somehow misleading them as they tempted to be a part of the world of rich, elite, which they will never experience. So there are two interpretations of this, why Shakespeare is considered as wicked. Now, why the map is a bad example with ships and sons and love tempting them to steal. The map on the classroom walls is a bad example because it gives them the glimpse of a beautiful world out there which some children have never experienced. The world of these poor children is confined to the narrow streets of the slum. The map for them is the best example, is a bad example because it arouses in them hope and aspiration which may never be fulfilled. Their classroom is the world for them, is the whole world for them, which is stuck in poverty. Their world is engulfed with poverty, hunger and hopelessness. So this map mounted on the wall is unreal for these poor, some children. The picture of the beautiful world with its sufferings, with its offerings like ships, 
the sun which are symbolic of adventure joy and brightness of life which these children are deprived of and love which is and love which is a sum total of all the tenderness of feelings and affection that make our life meaningful all these are absent from the from the lives of the slum children the vulnerable children are misled with sights of a world that tend to desire things which they might never be able to achieve and hence they are tempted to resort to unfair means they commit crimes in order to escape from the harsh realities of their slum and move away to the world outside to get their dreams fulfilled the awareness of a prosperous life outside the slum tempted the children to steal sun ships and love that symbolize rich fulfilling and meaningful life tempt them to steal in the slum life in their uh, in the slum their life is an endless struggle for their sustenance in small in small congested dirty dilapidated living condition so that is why the map is considered as a bad example because it is showing them the wall that tempt them to commit crimes to get out or to get those things which are distant for them for life that slyly turn in their cramped holes from fog to endless night the poet says that the lives of the slum children are slyly means cunningly turned into their cramped holes cramped holes here indicate the homes of the slum children which are dirty congested congested and are very small like holes they spend their entire life living and struggling for their existence in the small dirty rooms the ward cramp cramped intensify the stifling quality of life of slum children means suffocating quality of the slum children in those cramped holes small holes tiny homes the children are like rodents or mice that live a pathetic life in the cramped holes of the slum slyly turn indicates that the lives of the slum children moves from a bleak to a dark and hopeless existence by the expression cramped holes the poet not only talks about their small and poor houses but also suggests severe lack of opportunities of growth hopes and aspiration the children have adapted themselves to live in this tiny space they live in their small homes which are filled to full capacity a lot of people live in very small houses many of them even died without getting out of these cramped holes so the poet feels it not only irresponsible but also immoral to hang pictures of a beautiful of a perfect of a beautiful and perfect place and so and show them a perfect world to these children who live in a suffocating hovels move from one endless night to another without any ray of hope in desperation to reach a world that is far removed from their lives they commit crimes like stealing from fog to endless night the poet uses the phrase to describe there is no end to sorrows and suffering of the slum children this phrase describe the miserable bleak and hopeless existence of the slum children who have a dark future fog and darkness dominates their lives in slum their children is an endless struggle for sustenance in small congested dilapidated living condition the poet seems to suggest that the slum children do not have any brightness in their lives fog refers to the uncertainty of their lives as they are unsure where their lives will lead indicating a bleak future and endless night is the dark and hopeless existence the only they only have uncertainty and hopelessness with themselves life in a slum is an endless night forever dark and unclear without any hope and nothing to look forward from birth till death their condition is the same there is no improvement in their situation the future of slum children is uncertain and full of darkness and remain the same from birth to death they d- they live lives of uncertainty and suffering from morning to night and their condition turns from bad to worse their life is one of the endless struggle in darkness the future of the slum children is without any ray of hope a future that can go from bad to worse these cramped holes which are their homes will 
slowly turn their lives into an endless night. This means they have no bright future at all. There is no hope for them in the future at all. So from now it is foggy. Then it is going to be an endless night. Means their future is going to be a total darkness. The children make desperate attempts to live their lives despite misery, hopelessness and suffering. From the beginning of their life till they die, these children live in pathetic condition. Their suffering is never ending. On their slag hip, the children wear skins peeped through by bones and spectacles of steel with mended glass like bottle beads on stone. In this line, the poet illustrates a physical description of the slum children. The poet goes on to describe the sorry state of these unfortunate children. On their slag heap, and what is a slag heap? The slag heap is a pile of waste material that indicate dirt and garbage. So there may be true reference of slag heap. By slag heap, the poet refers to the thin, emaciated and unclean bodies of the slum children. Emaciated means extreme poverty and due to the extreme poverty, their body becomes very thin. Or it may indicate the dirt and squalor of the slum in which they live in. Where skins peeped through by bones, poet has used very powerful image which force us to think of students, of slum students who are not eaten for days. They are malnourished and as a result, they are reduced to skins and bones. These deprived children are so malnourished that they appear to be wearing skins on their unclean body and their bones are peeping out of their skin. They, the slum children are so thin that one can easily see their bones through the thin layer of their skin. The poet has used the poetic device metaphor which where comparison has been made between skin and clothes. Their skin looks like a thin layer of cloth and the bones beneath are visible through the skin. It just shows the bad condition of the children. From the, from the description, we can understand that the children suffer from malnutrition and so they are fail, frail and delicate. They wear spectacles of steel with mended glass, discarded. Discarded spectacles by the rich, mended means repaired and it worn several times. They use mended glass as they cannot afford to replace the broken ones. They are wearing broken, overused and mended spectacles. The children are wearing spectacles which are made of steel having shattered glasses, although it was mended. Spectacles with cracked glasses looking like repaired pieces of a glass bottle lying on stones, suggesting immense poverty. When the bottle hits on the stone and is shattered into pieces, then after you mend it, the cracks still remain there. It does not, uh, it still remain there. So the, their glasses look exactly like the same. They do not give a clear vision, but a blurred one. The state of poverty is intensified by the fact that the glasses which these children wearing are cracked and look like broken pieces of a bottle. They have mended it to be used. Glasses of these spectacles are like bottles hit on the stone. They are broken into beads. Perhaps they have picked out spectacles of steel from the garbage thrown by rich people. The spectacles of steel may also, may also refer to their rough lives which is as hard as steel due to poverty and social injustice. Their outlook in life have also hardened because of life's ruthlessness. There is no gentleness or softness in their young lives. The poet deliberately evokes sharp images like bones, steel, glass, bottle bits and stones to conjure picture of hardship in the lives of the children. The slum children are victims of social injustice, squalor and filth. What does squalor mean? It's filthiness as a form of neglect or poverty indicating the environment of the slum they live in. Stephen Spender, Stephen Spender has also used simile, like bottle bits on stone. It described the glass 
in the spectacles which are broken. Similarly, their hopes, aspiration, and lives also lay scattered, shattered, and neglected. Their entire appearance reflects their misery and deprivation. They see the world through broken glass and thus have a distinct and blurry vision of the world. Their entire appearance reflects misery and deprivation. All of their time and space are foggy slums, so blot their maps with slums as big as tombs. So here the poet tried to say that the children's lives are completely engulfed in the hopelessness, mist and darkness of the slum. The children spend their entire life in this foggy slums which is indicated by the line all of their time and space means their entire life. They spend in this foggy slums which comprise their world, which make their real world where they lead a pathetic life. The poet repeatedly used the word fog to talk about the unclear, vague and dull life of slum children, which is their ultimate fate and they cannot accept from it. The civilized world has drawn, drawn its own map, displaying opportunities for everyone, showing the progressive side of the world. The world of slum has been separated from their map because the slum themselves are like blot. So what is a blot? A blot is something that uh, it's an unwanted mark that spoils something with dark ink or anything. If you if you if you put a dark ink on a white paper, it spoils the white paper. That is a block. That is a blot. It's a stain, an unwanted mark. So this uh, this civilized people, you know, they don't include. They don't include in their map this slum, okay, because this slum themselves are like blot, a stain on the map of a civilized world, because slum indicate poverty and class inequality. The civilized people want to display the progressive side of the world and not the world of poverty or uh, deprivation or despair represented by slum, because that would stain their map, okay. So the map, map displayed in their classroom are no reality for them. And it is quite ironical that although the map is showing a vast world, they couldn't locate, the slum children could not locate their slum on the map, which is their world. And Stephen Spender talks about the miserable lives of the children. He becomes angry with the insincerity of the privileged class towards these poor children. He infuriated over the lack of compassion shown by haves. So what is a compassion? It is a deep awareness of the suffering of another which is lacking in this, in this class, in this civilized class who have made the map. Raising his voice against this social injustice and in an angry outburst, the poet says, So block their map with slums as big as doom. He wants the map to be blotted, to be marked with dark ink, with as many as slums, so that these children become visible to the world, so that people become aware of their existence and realize the plight of the slum dwellers. As big as doom, refer to the life in the slum, which is equal to, which is equal to life full of despair. They are doomed to live their lives in such a squalor slum and their future is enshrouded by misery. Squalor is filthiness created by poverty. Slums are the reality for these children. Life in a slum cannot qualify as living. Rather, it is a living hell where there is no health, happiness, growth and most importantly, no hope to look forward to. That is why the slum has been compared to doom, that is death, destruction, a future state that is very terrible. The children's world is the world of slum which has been compared to the world of doom, which means death, equal to death. The slums are no less than death. The future holds little or no promise for these children. The poet is angered by the situation and calls for a more realistic picture of the world for the children. 
He shows his outrage by suggesting that the map on the walls should be blotted, should be marked with dark ink, should be stained with huge slums as it will be their ultimate doom, a terrible future which they cannot prevent, for they will never be able to go beyond their slum dwellings. The poet angrily says that instead of displaying maps that symbolically represent the beautiful picture of life and the progressive world outside, the map should display the actual reality of life, the slums, which is their life, their world, and they are destined to live such a terrible life. The map on the classroom walls should show them the reality of their life. It must show the huge slums, spots, spotted with dark marks instead of beautiful world of the rich that is filled with freedom. The map on the wall tempt the slum children and they perform illegal deeds to fulfill their desires and aspirations. Thus, it would be better if they, if they do not think of a world which they cannot access as their lives are doomed by their circumstances and surroundings which are filthy slums. So the poet is anger, the uh, poet is anger, so that they let the map, so he says that let the map show this miserable condition, which is well, which is illiquid classroom with no quality teaching, no quality education is being imparted to them in that classroom. The, the civilized class should show the world that part. He wants the poor to enjoy social e equality and get the equal opportunities for their progress.